Welcome back. Our journey to the top continues. So without further ado, let's get started. And go. My goal is to see if I can make it into the top 100 to earn a trophy. Also, um, I've got a script installed that goes berserk every single game. Hopefully this will provide some entertainment value, if not allow me to play more games. Oh. Wow. Alright, so I'm playing against number 600 here. Or number 599. I seem to remember that this works out pretty decently for white, um, and I think I remember correctly, so that's not bad. Check. Uh, where do I attack? trying to control this square. Um, but now this is a bit loose. Um, and turn by turn that square gets even looser. I've got this pin on the C file, so I'm able to do fun tactics. And now I have discoveries over here, too. Uh, yeah, let's protect the bishop. Try to open the F file. I'm still trying to decide where to move the knight. If I had time, I'd figure it out, but um, as it is, I'm just kind of playing it by ear. So I might dance my bishop over here. F5 still in the cards. Um, No, knight a5 I just take. So he's not going to play knight a5 is my point. Um, now we've got this and possibly f5 to follow. Check. Uh, who needs to play f5? Also e6 is loose. Check. Victory. Nice. Victory. Tough Victory. break for my opponent. I bet he wasn't expecting he get paired with me, but we both happened to join in at the same time or something like that. Uh, let's play the Scandinavian. So this is constantly a threat. Um, 
Alright, I have to execute on the threat, and now e5's defended. Uh, I guess he could do d6, but I don't see the point. Since um, my bishop could redeploy elsewhere anyhow. And the d6 pawn's a bit extended, although it's hard to claim it's overextended. Okay, a queen exchange would be kind of nice, so I could use my king to fight my battle. However, this seems to be costing a pawn. Um, Alright, I defend my stuff, just keep defending. And somehow, eventually, I'm going to unwind from this. Uh, probably on the B file, with like rook B8 and b5 and rook b6. Alright, uh, I'm not afraid of that. Check. Okay, let's develop my bishop before he has a chance to play knight d5. I mean, he might have had a chance earlier, but now there's no longer that opportunity. And free pawn. C4 might be possible. I, I don't know if he's debating rook b3 or not. Okay, I don't want this rook here. I don't want it there either. Oh, there's an echo. That's a shame. Defend this square. I guess I'll turn down my speakers so there's less of an echo. I'm pretty much right in front of the mic. So I'm not sure what you mean is echoing. Um... If it's me, I guess that's just my voice. I don't know. Oops. Well, that's no good. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, I've lost this now. It's over. I can try to trick him. That's about all I can do here. So I win an exchange, but I'm losing a queen. Actually, knight takes queen would have been more logical. Way more logical. Um, so if he plays anything halfway reasonable, I should just resign this. Uh, I'm still hoping for some cheapo. But odds of a cheapo dwindle with every turn. Free knight. Check. Except it's you not free. Lose. I saw that last turn. I distracted myself, so shame on me. Um. I still don't know what you mean by an echo, though. I, like, I'm the only source of uh, a voice in this entire room. I don't have my speakers set to play my uh, the sounds that I make. 
Going berserk. All right, let's do this. Yeah, here we go. Go back. I'll allow a fork here, except it's not very strong. Um, so I've got the bishop pair. Oh, he can take here. You know, if he wants to. Check. Um, well, I gotta move. I have to advance my king. It looks a bit scary. Uh, Let's defend d5. Uh-oh. I've given tons of material here. Check. Uh, except he didn't see it, so I'm okay. But yeah, this work's gotta go. And we'll check, check here. I'm starting to think that check was not the best use of my uh, tempo. Uh, he's got to defend his bishop or come up with a counter threat except I'm trying to skewer and win the rook so if I could get any kind of counter play that would be a nice thing that would be very useful right about now Let's just move the rook to the open file. Um, I don't know. Rook has to go somewhere. Um, I hate guessing. So I got the square covered with my bishop, so um, I shouldn't be dropping the rook. Okay. Um, need this rook to cover c7 so I don't get mated. Oh, he's got bishop f5 coming up. among other things. Can I bluff him? I don't even know how I would bluff him here. Okay, like that, I suppose. Uh, oh, he's got mate in one. Um, here, let's hit the rook. Hopefully he doesn't see it. But my queen cover covers this now, so I have some chance of maybe escaping this. Check. Uh, just keep hitting the rook. Check. All right, I've got to run this way. Check. Oh, um. Shoot, I'm losing my queen. Check. 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 It's a draw. Huh. It's a shame those buttons unfold that way. It almost made me drop out of the tournament um, when I tried to click on the claim draw button. Alright. But yeah, we see that the opposition at this time is just a bit stronger than that at the start of the tournament, uh, for those who were watching yesterday.
So I'm just putting my bishops on the long diagonals. Although d3 seems like a good score for the bishop as well. I guess maybe this bishop goes to e5. Uh, so the other one could go to d3 and they can team up against the king's side. Just totally not how you're supposed to play these queen pawn openings. Um, but I don't know. I can try to play it this way and see like what's the normal strategy against it. So the knight's probably just, just going to defend that somehow, and I just bring my other rook over. Ultimately, I'd like to play rook e3 to g3 and have some tactics against the king's side. It's just a lot easier to pull those off when you're in severe time trouble uh, than it is to, say, do a slow positional grind on the queen's side. Um... Oh, he's just going to play rook b8. Right. Okay. Um, Check. Okay, so this is threat. Where is this threat? So I've got knight c5 plugging the bishop in the corner. Uh, I've got this covered so he can't play queen e3. Um... So I'm just trying to track down what he's threatening and what I can do about it. I've got a6 under fire. He's just going to bring his rook forward somewhere. Uh, I'll take here. I, I will need some open squares for this bishop. So uh, let's get the bishop out of e2. And it's pretty well posted where it's at. Um, Okay, I want to hold on to this pawn uh, and try to push this one. Let's go, pawn, go. E2 might have been stronger. I can't tell without analyzing. And I have no time to analyze, so. I'm trying to play a little cowardly, a little safe, and just hope that things work out. Um, that wasn't good on my part there. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where to move my knight to. Knight a6 would have been correct. Uh, let me go back and do knight a6. Except now this knight's in the way, so I can't afford it. Um, need my king to fight. I'm going to fall to some kind of skewer or fork or pin, but um, such is inevitable with this time pressure. Or an overworked piece. I mean, there's that idea too. All these motifs could be possible in this kind of position. Um, Alright, we'll play yeah. this out. He's not going to try to out-clever me here. He's going to just take my bishop. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of level-headed. And so now I push all the pawns and just try to get some kind of draw. Oh. Um, I'll just keep pushing. All right. 
right, I've got a take, and we'll go behind his king. Check. I missed an opportunity with rook f8. Um, Check. I keep missing opportunities, so I should be playing c4 here. There's c4. Check. Um, Check. The king needs to be centralized Check. to be effective. There's no fork, so I do have to drop back to a1. No fork or skewer, that's what I meant to say. Check. All right, so we're going to cover f2 this way. Uh, this rook is tied on the e-file, um, so as soon as it moves away, uh, uh, let's just promote. So I've got a rook, he doesn't. Check. I've got no time, however. Oh, well played, sir. Check. You lose. Ha <laughs> ha. I can't move fast enough. That's what I get for going berserk. That's what I get for going berserk. It's not a tournament winning strategy. It's a fun thing to do, though. Because it lets me play more games. But also, I just need to play better moves. Um, we're going to play all the refuted openings today. Because uh, these opponents are exhausted. They've been playing for who knows how many hours. I mean, they know how many, but none of us do. Um, yeah, let's just get out of this pin. Oh, right. Uh, okay, we'll try to put some pressure here and make him think that I have time to step out of this. He could have just taken the pawn. It would have been a, a free pawn. Uh, but I tricked him. And it's quite possible I'm losing my bishop against good play. Now if this knight moves, I have queen takes a2. I have not calculated it. Neither has my opponent. He's moving um, pretty quickly. I'm moving quickly because I have no time. I don't know what his reason is. Actually, this hits a1 and d5. Um, yeah, he can take e7 and win the bishop pair, but I got a pawn. Uh, So now I've got queen a1 followed by knight b4, or possibly the reverse. Um, I actually have to do this first, because queen a1, queen b1 is his way out of that. So he's, I'm just going to take the bishop pair and try to gain some advantage with that. Um, or maybe encourage him to keep pushing pieces around the sector until his king has nothing defending it. Um, by things I mean, like, just push his pawns away, uh, maybe move the rook, I don't know. Check. Free queen for a knight. Alright, so then we play bishop f5 and queen b... well, okay, it's not happening. We just take here, hit the bishop. Right, step back, pin this bishop. He's not going to be so obliging for the rest of the game. I'm actually going to have to fight him uh, tooth and nail to get any kind of progress here. Check. You might block the bishop because that's really tempting. Um, yeah, 
And it's now he's made a special concerted effort not to hang anything the rest of the game because he's already down a queen for a knight. So I have to play good moves to win this. Um, Check. I can't just try to cheapo him all day. Although I missed queen c5 check, check before king king and knight. Um, but yeah, trying to cheapo him is eventually just not going to work. Um, I need to use all my pieces, and I'm trying to develop, but he keeps hanging pawns, so... Uh, okay, now I've developed the rook. Um, but more importantly, if I don't take the pawns, then he fortifies them, and it's really hard for me to break through. Okay, so this h4 idea gives me an idea. Sure, take my pawn. Okay, sure, whatever. It's a pawn. Check. Okay, you got my pawn. <clears throat> What's your idea? Note, it's going to take him a second tempo to move away with the bishop. He can't just do knight takes f7, bishop takes rook takes Check. f7 because I win a free bishop. Um, that wasn't me setting a cheapo, that was me saying he just can't do that. And he did it anyway. Um, Check. Let's get the king in the corner. Hit the rook. More importantly, hit rook d1. Check. And gg. Check. All right, so we're in the top 500. That's not nothing, but I think it signals that this way I'm playing, I probably can't make it into the top 100. I will at some point. Um, if I want to try to win a trophy, I will need to stop going berserk. Still, going berserk every game is kind of fun. It's just completely nuts, though. Um, all right, we'll take here. Hit this square. Keep putting all my influence on that square. If knight e4, I just take on e4. If knight takes e5, pawn takes as a fork. Um, maybe I intend g4, g5. I don't know. Check. That's a stock sacrifice. And by stock, I mean uh, this has been played very many times before and has demonstrated to work in so many contexts. Uh, That's why you don't move your only defender off of these three files. Um, so, I've played a good move. How often does that happen? All right, queen e7? Can we see queen e7, please? All right, now we're talking. I'm not threatening a darn thing other than mate in one. So he's gonna move the queen again. And then I just, oh, he's not, and we just end the game. I was gonna say my next plan was rook e3 to f3, which is what he stopped by playing d4. Uh, his d4 did stop me from bringing my rook to f3, but it wasn't worth it. And we got the Budapest gambit. Or is it the Budapest? I don't know. How do you say it? I mean, why would it have a sht at the end? There's so much I don't know about chess. Alright, so... This is mainline Budapest Gambit, um, the part where you just win your opponent's rook for a knight. Um, possibly win the queen if he does something crazy. All right, let's take the rook for nothing, sure. Um, let's just check him. Check. Alright, and uh, I could do this if I want to win the knight um, and get into an endgame. 
Yeah, material-wise, this doesn't actually lose very much. So this way I save my knight in the corner. Uh, it does cost me the rook. But... This way I keep a, some kind of lasting initiative. Um, That knight wasn't getting out. So I opted for this end game, which seems like a decent end game. Um, I've always got rook d8 check and knight d4. I'm just trying to figure out what's the opportune moment to play such a thing. Uh, I want my knight here, though. So now if he blocks the bishop when I check, uh, or he just does that, I just take here. And I'm hitting the bishop. Yeah, let's play this endgame. I like this one. No objections here to playing that endgame. And just go back. And, um, Check. oh, let's not hang the rook. That would be a vast improvement over hanging the rook. All right, and two passed pawns um, look pretty strong. This knight's trapped. Oh wait, this whole time, well, no, if I pushed h6, yeah, no, my rook's defending it. So it wasn't necessary for me to go through these extra maneuvers just to get the pawns moving. Uh, I could have been pushing the h-pawn the entire time, because uh, my king defended the bishop. Anyhow. Um... So I'm going to step back here, put my rook behind my pawn, probably play g3, um, maybe h3. Is he going to take? Okay, now I, I do have rook h5 forcing king h2, but it doesn't go any further than that. I have reduced the scope of the rook, so this makes it safer for me to move about. Um, so king h2 is forced. go back and take the scenic route. Um, Check. There we go. Progress. Victory. I'll take it. I like how that was only like one or two rating points. Going berserk. Just play d3. If my opponent's gonna play this kind of system, I can slow roll it and still be doing great. Um, yeah, I think b4 happens in this line. Um, 
just go back. Nothing to worry about. Uh, free pawn? Because my pawn's protected. Okay, so, yeah, now I can just take here and exchange uh, two pieces for a rook. And I think I'm doing okay. Usually you try to avoid such an exchange this early in the game, um, or at any time in the game, because two pieces can be pretty powerful. Um, I should have played c4. It would have been much... well, no, I would have hang, hung a piece. Um, Check. So much for my tactics trying to win the rook, but... Um, no, I control a lot of space, and I'm threatening b5 and c4. We can exchange bishops on the long diagonal, and suddenly he doesn't have a bishop pair to speak of. Um, I'm guessing knight e5. Or that. This actually tries to win material, and it would work if not for queen h8. Uh, which is just a lucky shot. I did not calculate too far Check. in advance. Um, but I've just been trying to keep my pieces active. Note that they've still got this under attack. Um, so his exposing his king this way might not uh, be the best use of his time. I'll just take that. And then kick the knight. Check. Check. This is me just mainly trying to intimidate, although I do Check. get some peace activity out of it. Uh, let's actually win the queen. Check. When you see a good move, look for a better move. Um, Check. Let's win the queen and more. Check. Okay. I think I've won enough pieces. Victory. My endgame techniques are a bit questionable. Ah. Are you saying just because I'm not playing accurate moves? Um, I'm definitely opportunistic in endgames. Like, I'm not always playing the ideal move. Um, sometimes I'll play the tricky move that on occasion just wins the game on the spot. Uh, So the idea is queen takes, and then bishop g7. Oh, also queen f8 mate. So I'm guessing just knight c6, queen f8 mate, as the continuation. I'll pre-move bishop takes... Uh, okay. Yeah, he just sacks... Uh, he actually calculated that accurately. 